help your kitty with whether it's lower urinary tract disease or some weird, you know, there aren't too many cats that have this hyperesthesia syndrome, but it, those that do, it's really hard. They get really painful. The neurology community is like, well, is that a seizure? Is that a pain disorder? What is it? You know, and holistically, let's just look at it as something that's out of balance. And what can we do to relieve the pain, relieve the inflammation? or inflammatory bowel disease, any of those cat issues that require balance and stress reduction. Welcome to the Pet Care Report podcast by Pet Summits. Here's your natural cat health care host, Dr. Megan Barrett. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a very special guest today for an exciting interview. We've got veterinary neurologist, Dr. Susan Wagner. She is a trailblazer exploring the spiritual connection between humans and animals. She is a sought-after speaker on energy theory, sound therapy, and self-discovery, and the founder of Equine Assisted Awareness, which provides energy-based equine therapy for humans. Additionally, she co-authored Through a Dog's Ear, a guide on using sound to enhance the well-being and behavior of dogs. So welcome, Dr. Wagner, and we're so happy to have you today. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm really excited about this. Me too. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about some topics for cats, obviously, um, an introduction to energy healing, and some specific techniques that we can utilize for common disorders that cats tend to get. And then how can we incorporate this energy healing into our daily care of our cats? So let's go straight into it. Um, Dr. Wagner, can you briefly explain energy healing and its role in treating feline urinary tract disorders and hyperesthesia, which can mean excessive pain? Yeah, that's a good one. So we could spend the next, you know, however, how long just on that. The I got into energy medicine um, many, many years ago. So it's been close to 30 years now. When I had my own journey, I was getting ready to do my neuro residency and I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and nobody knew what that was at the time. And a friend got me a gift certificate to something called craniosacral therapy, which is, is really, it's a touch therapy, but it's very energy based. And it worked. And it was at that point, because before then I was very like, you know, left brain, that's all woo woo. Well, you know, when you experience it, you know, it's not woo woo. And from that moment on, I just had to know, how does this work? What is this? And so that's when I found Healing Touch for Animals. And I also studied Reiki, many things. And with most energy practitioners, it kind of ends up being your own, your own version of things. And the way it really works is that we know from very rigorous science that everything in our bodies, everything in our animal companions' bodies um, at the smallest level are really bursts of energy. You know, we learned about electrons and protons and all of that in science class, but it's really very, very small bursts of energy. So each of our cells has a vibration. And then we're giving off a vibration, you know, so we're like a pebble thrown into a pond. That's just the easiest way for me to think about it. You know, we're the solid, we coalesce into the solid, even though the pebble's really vibrating, and then it's creating ripples that go off. And everybody's experienced this. You know, when we walk into a room, maybe there's been a disagreement. What do we say? The tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. What are you feeling? How do you feel somebody's tension if you're not touching them? Well, you're feeling the ripples coming off of them. So what an energy practitioner does, whether with touching the body or off the body or even at a distance, because we now know through the research with the Hadron Collider that there is a massive energy field that connects everything. So that's how it works at a distance. We're all connected. And so an energy practitioner will sense the energy, just like we learn to touch things and hear things and see. It's another sense. We learn how to work with that and then manipulate it by using the larger energies that we have on hand, because again, we're connected to this huge energy field. And we help to balance the body, just like a a maestro can hear 
notes that are out of tune in an orchestra and, and get the orchestra back in tune, what we're doing is getting the body back in tune and back in balance. And, and animals are such wonderful self healers anyway, especially cats, because we're talking about cats today. And what you probably heard it in vet school is as well as like put two parts of a cat together in the room and it, it'll help. It'll heal. You know, if it breaks a leg, yes. just make sure they're in the same room. It's going to heal. Cats are incredible self healers. Yet there's so much um, out of balance in a cat or a dog or a horse's life or our lives. So if we can get them back into balance, that really stimulates what can help them to heal. So yeah. as we're talking about- I love about that metaphor. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we have the, to get the symphony being out of tune. I'm like, I totally get it. That makes so much sense. Exactly. And, you know, and we have to joke a little bit because science is, you know, we have to have science, we have to have the experiments, we got to bring it out. And all the scientists are patting themselves on the back, which they should. Yet, you know, if you study traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, like, they got this thousands of years ago. <laughs> so it's just science is catching up to some universal wisdom. And that's okay. We, we just, it's a little cosmic chuckle and we go, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're really smart. Um, but with cats, there's so many disorders that we really feel are stress related. And, and you're lucky in that you're much younger than I am. I graduated that school many, many years ago before I, and I was out for a few years before I went back to do my residency. And, you know, we didn't even talk about the stress in cats. You know, it was feline lower urinary tract disease was food related. I remember Tony Buffington at Ohio State where I went teaching us that. Now Tony is exactly, he evolved and did the research and did the work. And now he's going, whoa, wait a minute. This is, yes, food's a part of it, but stress, 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 stress. Yeah. So yeah. what we can do today is talk about all those things that can reduce stress and help your kitty with whether it's lower urinary tract disease or some weird, you know, there aren't too many cats that have this hyperesthesia syndrome, but it, those that do, it's really hard. They get really painful. The neurology community is like, well, is that a seizure? Is that a pain disorder? What is it, you know, and holistically, let's just look at it as something that's out of balance. And what can we do to relieve the pain, relieve the inflammation or inflammatory bowel disease, any of those cat issues that require balance and stress reduction. I think that's, that's where we want to go today. Yeah, absolutely. So could you delve into the specific healing techniques or approaches mm -hmm. that could effectively treat these? Yeah, abs absolutely. And um, what I want to say first is that we are all energy practitioners. So I'm going to teach you a little technique here because, I, you know, so many people say, well, can you can I do that? Yeah, everybody can do that because, again, everybody's that pebble in the pond. So it's just a matter of learning how to tweak our ponds which helps our animal companions. So the first thing that I think is so important is because we love our kitties so much. And I, you know, I love dogs. I am a veterinarian. Of course, I love dogs and horses and cows and emus and but I'm a crazy. All the cat. animals. <laughs> yeah. The neighborhood knows that there's the crazy cat lady that used to walk her cats on a leash. And, you know, so that's me. And I know that connection, whether it is with a dog or a cat, it, it's a soul connection and, and it affects us when they're out of balance and they're suffering. And especially something like lower urinary tract disease, the hyperesthesia, the inflammatory bowel, because they might require trips to the vet and emergencies and it's frightening. So the first thing to know is take a deep breath and know that you're doing okay. Uh, one of my recent passions is that so often as people have gone into holistic medicine or if they're more conventional, you know, I, I kind of went in both worlds now for 35 years and I see the thing that I think is the most damaging is judgment. So I don't want you to judge yourself. 
I don't want you to go, oh my God, I was feeding the wrong thing. Or, oh my gosh, I gave a vaccination or, oh my gosh, you know, or, or opposite from the traditional conventional side, like, no, you can't do that. You're, you know, if you think about energy medicine, you're a bad owner, guardian, but we're getting rid of all that. So I want you to take a deep breath and know that when you come from your heart with your cat or dog, you're doing good and you'll be guided. And so the technique I want to teach you is first off to take some deep breaths, calm yourself, because animals are very much a mirror for who we are. And again, I'm putting this under the guise of there's no judgment here. I don't want people going, okay, what am I making my animal sick because I have all these life stressors? Nope. We're just two souls that are walking a path together. So if your kitty has a disorder that creates a lot of pain, I want you to look at the metaphor. Life is really a bunch of metaphors on every level. So what's painful to you? Where in life is there a pain that maybe you just don't quite want to look at? But by having your cat express that to you, it forces us to go, oh, wait a minute. What hurts with me? Is it emotional? Is it physical? And what can I do to better help myself? And when we do that, we're being, we're being a practitioner to help our animals. How can I make my environment less stressful? How do I make my um, pond less stressful? And that's even if you can do some deep breathing exercises, just a minute, a couple times a day. Um, we'll talk more about music, listen to calming music mindfulness, whatever you can do to, to tell yourself and just talk to yourself. I wouldn't advise doing this in the Kroger line, you know, at the grocery store, but you know, just tell yourself, okay, I am going to come back to the still point. I'm, I'm going to come back to balance. I'm going to take a deep breath. I am going to calm. It might last two seconds, but that's energy technique. So I want you to take that deep breath, come back to a place of calm. You can shut your eyes. And then I want you to think of something that really just brings peace or joy, whether it is your animal or a day at the beach or whatever that is, a tree, your child, just that, that feeling. And I want you to kind of visualize, if you like to visualize this energy, that feeling coming out of your heart and going over to your animal companion. And if you're not a visual person, like I'm not so much, you just, what we call set an intention. Your intention is that your animal receives this energy, that your environment becomes calmer and peaceful and more joyful. And you can, you know, these are very um, mindfulness, Buddhist practices. You can you can then send it to the rest of the, the world, whoever you want to send it to. Because again, everything's connected. So as we're very, very disciplined in going, yep, every day, I'm just going to take it down to the still point, send some good energy, even if it's just for 30 seconds, that's monstrously, amazingly good to help any animal companion, but especially cats. So that's the first thing I would have you do. And then if you do have access to an energy med medicine practitioner, or you want to learn it yourself, you know, take a healing touch for animals workshop, go on, they have online stuff. Um, and you'll learn anybody can do it. I remember when I first started studying in and I couldn't feel it. And, you know, being that type A got to be in control neurology personality. I'm like, I don't feel it. And, but my mentor, Carol Commentor is like, Sue, you don't have to feel it. You're doing it. And that's the case. So you just relax into it, know that you'll get it, learn the techniques if you want to, or find somebody in your area that maybe can do a house call. Or if your kitty doesn't mind going to a practice, great. And there's a lot of acupuncturists. You'd be surprised. Cats tend to, I don't know if this has been your experience, but I feel like cats love acupuncture. They really it has do. so much. Yeah. yeah. And that's a type of energy. It's, am it's really amazing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. when you hit those certain points, you're getting the energy to flow as in the meridians, which are just electrical circuits. And so, you know, a lot of cats like to go into the office for acupuncture or you have somebody come to the house. Anything that 
here's a tip up. Like if you go, Ooh, that sounds interesting. That's what I want you to follow because that's your own intuition going, Oh, that might help. So you start yeah, with definitely. that. Yeah. And then along the lines of what Tony Buffington and many, many others that have looked into lowering the stress for cats, you know, and please chime in. You probably have some tips as well, but you know, the cat grass that they, if they're an inside only cat, the cat grass that they can munch on, or even like the big pieces of grass that they get for little dogs to pee on. If they're in an apartment, like a high rise, it's called fresh patch or something like you can order that and pee on it because they pee in a litter box, but they can lay on the grass. They can feel the earth. And that I think can be very helpful for inside. The windows. I mean, we all know the cat trees and the windows and everything or consider like I, the crazy cat lady, putting them on a leash and walking them around. So they stay safe. The bunnies and the birds stay safe. Um, but anything that will allow them to have more of a natural environment, I think can be extremely helpful with these, these disorders, whatever they are. Um, and um, going into more of the, the environment, like the music therapy, you know, I, I love doing through a dog's ear. And yes, we actually did study cats at the same time. And there was some music that came out later through a cat's ear. And I just, the data was, you know, cats are like so chill anyway. I'm like, I don't know if you're <laughs> sick or not. I, I can't tell. But we do know that they do, they do calm with, with calming music or even uplifting music. Um, there are some of us that feel like they like strings and, you know, like string quartets and things like that. Mozart that might be a little more uplifting. Um, yeah. Versus real calming. So just play with it and see, see if they take a deep breath, but some type of calming music that will calm you and them even a half an hour a day can be just tremendous to get nervous system because we're all talking about stuff that works on the nervous system that's that's the key here we can't teach them to meditate but we can get their autonomic nervous system that fight or flight to kind of come down the rest and digest to come up so it's balance and music does that deep breathing energy medicine it really all comes down to what we can do for that nervous system and that's going to help Plus, we know from a lot of music therapy with pain research, they're doing great stuff in humans and they're doing functional MRIs to show that different parts of the brain in disorders like fibromyalgia, which I think cats have actually, um, that the brain starts to communicate with each other, the different areas better. So it's not just That's about- so cool. Reducing- it is not cool. Yes. Yes. So whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder, pain, music therapy every day helps the brain rewire and get back into. Yeah. And I think that's just so exciting. Um, same thing with tuning forks. If you like tuning forks, you can work with a tuning fork directly on the cat or just above it, or just have forks that bring a beautiful tone into the room. Those are wonderful as well. So that type of thing helps the pain plus the stress, which then secondarily helps the pain. So those are things I absolutely love. What about like aromatherapy and um, essential oh, oils? Yeah, yeah. So I I started working with essential oils again about 30 years ago, and I love them. And, and so anything that is very calming and pain relieving – And I know there's a lot on the internet about, oh my gosh, never use an oil on an animal, never use an oil on a cat. And, you know, that's, no, if it's a good, high quality, therapeutic, pure oil, then, and there are- it's diluted. (laughs) Yeah, and diluted in some cases. In in others, I don't even dilute. It depends on the oil. So if I have a, if I have a human that is very smell sensitive, will dilute. Or a cat that smells sensitive, like maybe you don't, or a dog, if they don't like smells, then maybe oils aren't the way to go. But you do have to be careful with a couple of oils on cats um, because they don't have a, an enzyme in their liver to metabolize them. 
But two of my favorite oils that do so much are safe in cats, and that's lavender and frankincense. Both of them are calming to the nervous system. They're both anti-inflammatory. They both relieve pain. Right here, it's like, don't worry about the rest of them. Get a good, and one of my favorites is a lavender chamomile blend, um, or and chamomile safe for cats. Or I have another favorite that's actually a lavender frankincense blend. And so you can diffuse it in the room or you can put it on yourself and have your animal smell. Dilute it, not dilute, put on the animal. And you just have to read their body language of, you know, are they leaning into it like, uh, or like no, I don't want to do that. But again, we're reducing stress. We're reducing pain. We're reducing inflammation. Those are all the things that we want for these weird disorders that create a lot of inflammation so that I love those. And um, one other product that I love that's over the counter, um, if you don't have a veterinarian or a homeopathic practitioner that can guide you, because homeopathy is great for these things and just, and it's so safe. That's the thing. Yeah, very gentle. Oh, yeah. There's a product over the counter called, hopefully I can say the name of the product. It's called Tea Relief. And and the reason I focus on it is because it is over the counter. People can get it if they, you know, don't have a homeopathic practitioner they can work with that would be more um, specific to that animal. But there's a pet formula with Tea Relief and then there's a human formula. And it's, if you use the human, use the one in the red and white bottle. And again, it is calming, reduces inflammation, takes away the pain. And so even if I have a cat with lower urinary tract disease and they're through their episode, I have people use this every day, all the time, because along with the other stress reducing things, because I want to try to prevent the next one. And I think that this product does that. It's, and it's so safe. It's, you know, if your veterinarian wants to use other pain meds or other medications, no problem. They all go fine together. All of these things go well with what your veterinarian wants to happen. So that's the other wonderful piece of it. It's not a, and, you know, if, and, or it's yes, it's and. So um, I find that product, the pet formula will tell you the the, the serving size. And if you use the human, it's in tablets. You just cut the tablet like a quarter of a tablet. You can mix it with a little warm water, mix it with their food, throw it in a water bowl. Fantastic. Once or twice a day. I love that stuff. Just love it. So do you have any other ideas as well that you, that you like to use? Yeah. I mean, I think just looking at the big picture of your household too if you have multiple pets or multiple cats um, looking at the dynamics between the cats and seeing uh, if there's if one of one or both are stressed out because of the dynamics between them and sometimes those can be very subtle with cats but if it seems like there's you know a, a very dominant one or a submissive one and seeing if their needs are met in terms of you know nice hiding places or uh cat trees to get up on on top of um i love all the energetic and holistic things that we can do but then there's also just basic enrichment for the cats which we sometimes forget about for the indoor cats especially is just looking up um different techniques for it's called environmental enrichment where we're just making sure that all of their behavioral and emotional needs are met in terms of the things that cats really like and enjoy having indoors to mimic more of a outdoor lifestyle, like being able to climb and claw on things, um, getting up and looking down at the rest of the family and everything going on. So there's a really good uh, website. Is it with the Ohio state Mm -hmm. that they have? Yeah. Yeah. The Ohio state website. Yeah. Yeah. That has a lot of really, really good helpful tips for managing stress in cats with Um, environmental enrichment. And those are good tips too, just to make sure that all of those things are there, making sure there's, you know, one litter box per cat plus an additional one so that everyone has a peaceful place to use the bathroom and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's called the indoor cat initiative. 
Um, yeah, that's yeah, right. through uh, higher state and and exactly like we have to think of that bigger picture and 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 also what I would say too is this goes into the mirroring piece of it and, and again there's no judgment here it's awareness because if you can see this and you can kind of go all right what is that about then you will really help those dynamics so if there are cats that aren't getting along, I promise you. And, you know, when I started seeing this, I thought, oh, here it is. They told me I was working too hard. (laughs) They told me I was gonna, (laughs) I'm like, I'm imploding. I've lost it. It's just too crazy. And yet it just, it just kept showing itself. And, and so what I know, what I've seen over and over again, is if their cats are not getting along, I promise you, there are humans who are not getting along. Now it, doesn't necessarily mean it's a, you know, brother, sister, spouses. Maybe it's a single person and it's with a, a sibling that doesn't live with them or a boss or, and it usually starts very early in life. I'll talk about that in a second. Yet just, it's okay. Again, there's none, no judgment. Yet if we have the courage to go, Oh, wow. How are my cats me? What are they showing me? And be grateful. I, I know people think I'm really crazy when I say, when your cat pees on the rug, thank it. Because I promise you, somebody is pissing on you. You are allowing somebody to pee on you. I don't know if it's your boss. I don't know if it's your spouse. I don't know if it's your mother. I don't know who it is, but I promise you they are. And I don't, you know, I don't want people to, you don't know, tell me who it is. I'm, I'm, I would prefer you would talk to a life coach, a spiritual coach, a therapist. You know, let's get past the stigma of talking to mental health providers. But I promise you it's there. It's there. And then doing these things to help the cats as well as us um, is, is so important. And, and this is just an energy thing for me. I, I am Serbian American. So I, I grew up hearing about Nikola Tesla, who when I was little, nobody knew who he was, but he was actually friends with my grandparents. He would come to visit. Now everybody knows. Yeah. Tesla was a car named after him and all of this stuff. So I heard all the stories and he, and of course, as I got into energy medicine, it was only natural that I would start to read his work, attempt to understand it. And he had this theory of magnetic resonance, where if you put an oscillating device on the beam of a skyscraper, just gentle, not a jackhammer, but just gentle, it event eventually resonates with the the skyscraper, the building, and then it entrains. And entrains means getting it to be in rhythm. That's what it means. And so to the point where his theory was the skyscraper would tumble because it couldn't maintain the frequency. And this is what we see when an opera singer shatters a crystal glass because her voice gets so high, it hits the same frequency as the crystal and it can't maintain it. And then poof. And I think that's also how homeopathy works to me It because homeopathy really is energy medicine. And so I thought, you know, if this happens in the, the natural world, why can't it happen to us? Because we're energy. And that's when the light bulb went on. Like it does. It does. We just aren't taught to look at it. So I think that something happens when we're a kid that is, it can be unfortunately very traumatic for some people or seemingly minimally traumatic, yet important. And it sticks to our field and it just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. Somebody bullies us and then we kind of get over it and then it comes back again. And each time it comes back, we can either get more angry, more victimized and strengthen it. Yeah, more defensive. Yeah, more defensive and strengthen it, like pushing a kid on a swing. Or if we knew this, we could kind of take that deep breath, come back to that still point, go, okay, what do I need to know here? How can I respond differently than I have in the past? And that decreases it. So, and I think it's really why we're here. We're all energy workers. And the key to this is that this, this pattern is the opposite of who we are. So somebody that would um, be, have a lot of fear, 
their real truth is that they're courageous. And as they get over the fears, their true courage comes out. And, and I see this with, usually it's with dogs, but it can actually be with cats, you know, the aggressive, biting, bad dog. I know 100% I've seen it over and over and over again. There is some bit of anger in the human's field for some reason to be protected. And that dog is sensing it and mirroring it back. So again, it's being grateful to the animals. We still have to do our positive behavior training and all the things that we have to do that are always positive. And also if we can look at ourselves it just allows all the other techniques and the medicines and everything to work. So again, there's nothing wrong. It's, it's just have a little bit of fun with it if that's possible and go, ah, you know, um, and it even goes in the veterinary world. Like what patients are we attracting? Who's walking in our door? I was sort of known for having the really eccentric little loopy clients that's not lost on me. <laughs> so it's, like, oh, maybe I need to look at my own eccentricities and my own loopiness. And, oh, okay, thanks. You know, I, I get it. I get it. Thank you. So have fun <laughs> and, and know that your animals are there. I really feel like that's their spiritual purpose. They teach us, they help us to heal. And when we heal, we help them to heal. It's, it's all intertwined. It's all connected. Yeah, it always seems like it comes back to ourselves and self-reflecting, self-care to be able to take care of the animals in a, the best way possible. Yeah, I, I always felt like the, the most powerful form of veterinary preventative medicine is that the humans, you know, take, we take care of ourselves, which in this day and age, it's, I'm not saying it's easy. Gosh, I'm, you know, I'm the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, I worked 14, 16 hours. All, I, I get it. I get it been there, done that. And, and I know the consequences of that. Um, so we do the best we can. Again, no judgment, no beating ourselves up. It's that intention, that powerful intention of, okay, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to ask, put, ask that request for help. Like when you do that exercise where you come back to that still point and you kind of open your heart and think of something peaceful, if you're having an issue, you know, whether it's like, I'm really worried about my cat's health or worried about my finances, or like just this job doesn't feel right. I want you to take that issue and just sort of see yourself putting it into that frequency and let it go. Like basically you're putting it into this big quantum field of wisdom and just let it go and just ask for help on those higher realms that are out there. And just watch and see what starts to show up. I've had questions like that. And then a friend will give me a book. You, I think you'd like this book. The answer to the doggone questions right in the middle of that book. Yeah. That's, that's what intuition is. That's, that's the connective. When you start to work with this, it's really can be very fun. It can be really fun. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So what's your, what would you say your number one tip that you'd recommend the cat guardians will go away with today to implement right now? I think the number one tip is to focus on your own balance. See yourself as that pebble in the pond. Take it whatever time you have. Do that exercise where you breathe deep, come back to a still point, and then send that out to your cats, your dogs, your home. Just send it out. To me, that is the most powerful thing you can do. And then everything else will work even better when you can do that. Yeah, that's a great daily practice to, to for everyone to, to try out. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I've learned so much from you today. I really appreciate your time. Where can our audience learn more from you? That's a good question. I'm, I'm sort of like this, this uh, bad rash. I just kind of show up places. <laughs> I never really go away where a weird retrovirus is like, you think you've got rid of me, but <laughs> here I am again. Um, so I, I tend to show up, just kind of watch for the podcasts or the summits. Um, and intuitively I'm, I'm being guided again. It's like, okay, I love doing retreats. I love doing summits. I love doing lectures. And so I'm feeling like things are opening back up again. So there'll probably be a website coming and, 
um, you know, some writings and things like that. So just kind of watch and, uh, and you'll, you'll see, and I'm excited to sort of get more back out there and, um, and see what happens from it. That sounds great. I know you have some, uh, other interviews on YouTube and stuff from past conversations. So if you guys are looking for something now from her, you know, just Google her name and there's, there's quite a bit out there already too. And I'm so grateful because Pet Summits has done so much with their summits. And I was so lucky to be, you know, interviewed on a few of them and then have one. And, and so there's so much stuff. Yeah. If you look at, at some of those old YouTube things, it's, it's out there and, and there'll be more, more to come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And for everyone listening, just make sure that you're followed and subscribed. Please leave us a review if you found the interview interesting. And this can help us to reach more cat owners and for you to stay connected as we put out more information. But I just want to thank you again so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you and learning all these amazing techniques that you've shared. Thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing. It's wonderful. Okay, everybody. Until next time. Thanks for listening. 